Okay, so it is, let's see, January 26th, and we are reading today from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the verse that I've chosen is in chapter 16. It is text 7. Again, for those who just joined, we're reading from the Bhagavad Gita. That's chapter 16, uh, verse 7. So um, before beginning, I'd like to uh, go through the, um, the, the uh, like, is it the prayers and maybe just the um, honoring of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. All right, so I am looking here for the invocation prayers. Okay. Om Manana Timirandasya Jana Danjana Salakaya. Chakshu unmilitam yena tasma shri guruve namaha. Shri chaitanya mano bishtam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svaparantikam vandeham shri guru shri yuta para kamalam. Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunat Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrind Vrida Vanashvari, Prashabhanu, Sute Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye, Vanchakalpa, Tarubista, Chakripa, Sindhu, Bia Evacha, Patitanam, Pavane Bayo, Vaishnava, Bayo, Namo Namaha, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so uh, we're reading again from chapter 16, text 7, if you have uh, Bhagavad Gita available. Um, I was thinking to start with going through the word for word, and then we could read the verse line by line. Um, so, pravritim, pravritim, proper action, proper action, cha, cha, also, also, nivritim, nivritim. Improper action. Improper action. Cha. Cha. And. And. Jana. Na. Persons. Persons. Na. Na. Never. Vidu. Vidu. 
No. Asura. Asura. In demoniac quality. Demoniac quality. Na. Na. Never. Never. Sao cham. Sao cham. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Na. Na. Nor. No. Api. Also. Also. Cha. Cha. And. And. Uh, achara. Achara. Behavior. Behavior. Na. Na. Never. Never. Satyam. Satyam. Truth. Teshu. Teshu. In them. In them. Vidyate. Vidyate. There is. There is. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Janana vidura sura. Janana vidura suha. Na sao cham na pi cha charo. Na sao cham na pi cha charo. Na satyam te shu vidyate. Na satyam te shu vidyate. Would anyone like to recite the verse? Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Jana na vidu asura. Jana na vidu asura. Na cham na pi cha cha ho. Na so cham na pi cha cha ho. Na te shu Na satyam te shu te. Pravritam cha nivrit. Tim cha. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Jana na vidur asura. Jana na vidur asura. Na sa cham na na sa cham na pi cha charo. Na sa cham na pi cha charo. Na sa yam te su vidyate. Na satyam te su vidyate. Bravri team cha nivri team cha. Bravri team cha nivri team cha. Janana vidu rasura. Janana vidu rasura. Na sa cham na picha charo. Na sa cham na picha charo. Na satyam te shuvidyate. Na satyam te shuvidyate. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Pravritim cha nivritim cha. Yana na vidya ashira. Yana na vidya ashira. Na satyam na pichacharo. Na satyam na pichacharo. Na satyam te shuvidyate. Na satyam te shuvidyate. Okay, so we can go to the translation. Those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Okay, so I'll read the purport. In every civilized human society, there is some set of scriptural rules and regulations which are followed from the beginning especially among the Aryans those who adopt the Vedic civilization and who are known as the most advanced civilized peoples those who do not follow the scriptural injunctions are supposed to be demons therefore it is stated here 
that the demons do not know the scriptural rules, nor do they have any inclination to follow them. Most of them do not know them, and even if some of them know, they have not the tendency to follow them. They have no faith, nor are they willing to act in terms of the Vedic injunctions. The demons are not clean, either externally or internally. One should always be careful to keep his body clean by bathing, brushing teeth, changing clothes, etc. As far as internal cleanliness is concerned, one should always remember the holy names of God and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The demons neither like nor follow all these rules for external and internal cleanliness. As for behavior, there are many rules and regulations guiding human behavior, such as the Manu Samhita, which is the law of the human race. Even up to today, those who are Hindu follow the Manu Samhita. Laws of inheritance and other legalities are derived from this book. Now in the Manu Samhita, it is clearly stated that a woman should not be given freedom. That does not mean that women are to be kept as slaves, but they are like children. Children are not given freedom, but that does not mean that they are kept as slaves. The demons have now neglected such injunctions, and they think that women should be given as much freedom as men. However, this has not improved the social condition of the world. Actually, a woman should be given protection at every stage of life. She should be given protection by the father in her younger days, by the husband in her youth, and by the grown-up sons in her old age. This is proper social behavior, according to the Manu Samhita. But modern education has artificially devised a puffed up concept of womanly life. And therefore, marriage is practically now an imagination in human society. Nor is the moral condition of woman very good now. The demons, therefore, do not accept any instruction which is good for society. And because they do not follow the experience of great sages and the rules and regulations laid down by the sages, the social condition of the demoniac people is very miserable. Okay, I feel like um, maybe especially so as I am here with you all and endeavoring to uh, facilitate uh, to um, uh, speak uh, uh, not from my own mental speculation, but rather an endeavoring to understand and to uh, repeat what I have uh, gotten and understood from Prabhupada. I'm feeling nervous and uncomfortable reading this purport. There are several uh, things. Um, going on here okay so what um what I was thinking to do and this is like one of my first times going for this giving a class is to kind of just go through the purport um just like almost line by by line but not um like rereading every single part just kind of highlighting some things so that's what I was thinking to do and We'll see how that goes, and I'm I'm really just I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that that will uh, benefit maybe even one person that's either with us or uh, someone who might watch this. Okay, so starting in the first sentence, in uh, oh, and often we read the translation a second time. That might be good. Okay, those who are demoniac do not know what. It, what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Okay, so uh, maybe before going into the purport again, um, I can give a little bit of the context that 
I can. Um, I have not read the Bhagavad Gita in completion and I've read through chapter 16 um, uh, once. And I think that I will need to continue to reread it uh, throughout my life, uh, this lifetime. Um, but so far in this chapter, which is titled The Divine and the Demoniac Natures, um, uh, a very provocative title. Um, Krishna has shared with Arjuna uh, the qualities of um, the 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 divine or the uh, devas, which uh, can be understood to be those who are godly. Um, I think that that may also include saintly people, um, I think there. So Krishna has talked about the qualities of the divine, the devas, and he um, uh, has also... Um, well, he has just started to talk about some of the qualities of the uh, demoniac, maybe we could say like, I don't know if to say, oh, demoniac nature. So not class, but the demoniac nature. And some of those qualities uh, given in text four are arrogance, pride, anger, conceit, harshness, and ignorance. Um, and I can, I can say, uh, honestly, that those are some things that happen for me. And I, I can't say that they have any connection to um, Krishna consciousness, but they, they can still serve in terms of self-realization. Like, well, where is this arrogance coming from? Where is this anger coming from? Um, okay. So, all right. So yes, Krishna has started to talk about the um, the qualities of the devas and starting to is now starting to uh, talk about um, the qualities of the demoniac uh, nature. And in this in this verse, um, he's starting to talk about uh, qualities aside from that anger, like well. What are some of the symptoms, maybe, of uh, someone of a demoniac nature? Now, from my hearing of Srila Prabhupada, um, I think it's, it's maybe helpful to mention, like, okay, the, wor the wording you being used here is demoniac nature. Now, um, uh, my understanding is that all, all spirit souls, uh, their original constitution is to um, be a, a, a servant of Krishna, is to have a, an eternal intimate relationship with Krishna. Perhaps like, yeah, my, my get, my, what I'm getting is that some have uh, chosen to maybe have a relationship with Krishna in which they are denying the existence of Krishna. And certainly that would be considered uh, demoniac. Um, that's probably like uh, maybe the, maybe like the worst of, um, of like a demoniac quality uh, would be to deny the existence of Krishna, of God. Um, so yeah, like, okay, you, the word, the wording used here, demoniac nature, I was thinking like, oh gosh, it, does that mean that someone is like, uh, stuck in that position? May, may that mean that like they're, um, they're doomed, uh, for not only this lifetime, but for eternity. And so it, it, it for me, it, it, it was not just uncomfortable, but it was kind of like depressing because I could, I could see some demoniac qualities within myself. Like, okay, just in the purport uh, of text six, uh, 
one who does not follow the regulative principles as they are laid down in the scriptures and who acts according to his whims is called demoniac or a surf. It's like, well, yes, I have definitely done that the majority of my life. And like, if I'm honest, I think that I'm doing that a lot more than I am not doing that. So like, yeah, I, I've definitely had a process with um, this text. Uh, and fortunately, I, I heard from Shua Prabhupada, and that was um, comforting and reassuring. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, in every civilized human society, uh, there is some set of scriptural rules and regulations which are followed from the beginning especially among Aryans, those who adopt the Vedic civilization. So I think a few things are worth mentioning here. Um, civilized, I, I think that that's important to talk about because one might think like, well, what exactly is it to be civilized? Like, I think there can be lots of different interpretations, which uh, my experience in Krishna consciousness, like interpretations are dangerous. One ought to endeavor to understand what Prabhupada is meaning, but interpreting seems to be that, that mental speculation. Dangerous. Um, I get in trouble with that. So my understanding of civilized human society is that it is um, a godly uh, society, a godly um, uh, society w in which we are uh, connected to our true selves as spirit souls. And what that means is uh, not just like connected to our heart and uh, therefore feeling joy, but no, like connected to not just our, I, our truest identity, um, that not only is our being, but it tells us what it is that we are to do here and that our, our, uh, our role, our constitutional position is to serve Krishna. And we uh, get to have a relationship uh, with Krishna and we get to explore like what is our relationship with Krishna and what kind of relationship with Krishna would we like to have? My understanding is that we have um, an eternal relationship with Krishna. I'm not quite sure if that means like you, Drew, spirit soul that is being called Drew, you are only a servant of Krishna. Do not think about being a lover of Krishna. I'm not so sure because I know that there are different types of relationship with Krishna, a lover of Krishna, a servant of Krishna, um, having the relationship of a child with Krishna, um, having a relationship as parent of Krishna. Maybe there are infinite possibilities. I, I'm not quite sure there, um, but I'll bring it back. So civilized human society, my understanding is that civilized is meaning that it's not just uh, what Prabhupada talks about, like um, an animal society in which there is only uh, focus on glorified forms of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And um, okay. Those who do not. Okay. Yeah. So again, this is coming through. Those who do not follow uh, scriptural injunctions are supposed to be demons. And so <clears throat> I think that um, I have both like discomfort with this personally, and I also um, appreciate what I'm seeing as like the clarity. Um, I think that one might, uh, one could have the experience of thinking that that is like very uh, rigid and um, strict. And I mean, maybe, like, maybe it is, but personally, I'm, I'm seeing that, like, well, 
I mean, maybe, maybe they're just it, it, like in this case, like when it comes to absolute truth, and that is that that seems to be all like that's that's all that we're going to find in here. That's my that's my sense. That's my understanding. Is so like, yeah, it's it's not so much maybe open to interpretation, like um, okay, so I'm thinking scriptural injunctions i'm not quite sure if this is the same i would so appreciate if uh, i'm corrected on this but i'm thinking of like regulative principles and maybe there's separation i have also read um, something about following regulations so i'm thinking about that and how there can be maybe like interpretations of that which to me doesn't seem to make sense like when it says um for example uh um no illicit sex like one might say like oh well you know i'm married so between me and my wife or between my husband and i like sex it's okay we can still use contraception and it's like uh, it's like we're endeavoring to be conscious and create closeness but my sense is that like there, there isn't that kind of like wiggle room for interpretation. It's just like very simple, like sex is for the purpose of begetting Krishna conscious children. And there isn't like a room for other interpretations of what sex is for. Like it just seems pretty simple and straightforward and clear. And that's how I'm experiencing this, where it's just like, and it, it's not for me uncomfortable. It's just like, okay, like, I guess that I am at this time, mostly demoniac. Like, like I, I, I like, that's uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and like, it, it just like, I, I think that like, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's just a part of this process, my experience with this process of self-realization is that it's uncomfortable. And if one is wanting to be comfortable, then that might, that might um, be an opportunity to check in with like uh, one's intention in reading um, the Bhagavad Gita or in attending class or just like Maybe it's a check-in, a a a a a place for um, a check-in for where one is at. Like um, maybe one doesn't feel ready to uh, take a look at how how they're they're living, and maybe they're not um, ready uh, to um, be serious in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, and um, I guess we can move along, save some more things here, I suppose. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that, like, it is stated here that demons do not know the scriptural rules. I have death that is, to some extent, like, true for me now, nor do they have any inclination to follow them. Most of them do not know them, and even if some of them know, they have not the tendency to follow them. So I think that this is like an interesting area to comment a little more, because um, I've heard from Prabhupada where he has said, like, do not use this philosophy, do not use Krishna consciousness to cut, and uh, like, that I, and maybe I'm misremembering, or maybe the devotee um, in a like Prabhupada remembers series was misremembering because, like, my understanding of guru was like heavy and to cut. But I think that even if there was a misunderstanding of what Prabhupada was saying by this devotee, um, my what I got from that was. Prabhupada was meaning to be intelligent um, with respect to Krishna consciousness, to understand these things, 
but to do so in the mode of goodness, which would naturally like include compassion. And I, I, I feel touched, like even just hearing that, like right now, because I'm, I'm seeing how sometimes I can use my maybe understanding of scripture or um, my like, yeah, just like what I've learned as a way to make myself feel uh, superior, which brings me back to good old text for translation talking about arrogance and pride and uh, conceit and harshness. And so uh, some more demoniac qualities coming out there, but um, you know, like that's, that, that's not what we, what, how we want to use this knowledge. And so, yeah, I'm just thinking to mention that because um, as I'm learning uh, more and more and hopefully advancing in Krishna consciousness, I'm wanting to serve others, and I, I certainly wouldn't um, wouldn't find it to be helpful to um, be judged for uh, having demoniac qualities, because um, I think that that is the very foundation of this material world, is that we we and and like, I will, I mean, maybe it's dangerous for me to say we, but I, I think that Prabhupada would agree. Like, we are here because we want to enjoy separate from Krishna. It's not that we are here as like a pastime to like, uh, to like come out of our trick that we put on ourselves. Like, no, we have made a grave mistake, it seems, and then have uh, uh, like, followed that up with um, more mistakes and now we are getting the blessing and and good fortune uh, to be reading and hearing uh, from Prabhupada and uh, yeah with that said I'm going to refer back to Prabhupada's text here his purport because yeah I really just want to um, be speaking from that place so okay they have no faith nor are they willing to act in terms of the vedic injunctions okay so like they have no faith like when i'm hearing that i'm i'm wondering like what exactly Prabhupada is referring to like faith in humanity no i don't think so faith in culture no like um, faith in one's one's own strength. No, I really don't think so. Like, I I sense, uh, and I'm I'm wanting to like understand Prabhupada. My sense is based on what has already been said and what I know of Prabhupada is that he's referring to like faith in Krishna, and um, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Um, nor are they willing to act in terms of the Vedic injunctions. Yeah. So like um, Vedic injunctions, I think of the nine processes of devotional service and um, how, yeah, one can find reasons. Um, and maybe those reasons uh, are really excuses um, why not to um, follow uh, the the terms of the Vedic injunctions, and like I I don't know I'm almost I'm almost wanting to take a stand for this may be foolish but it, it seems like my own uh, maybe this is an interpretation but I, I think I'm endeavoring to understand here. Um, like, yeah, like an unwillingness to follow what I think of there is like, yeah, like 
we're here for a reason. We don't, we're, we're not pure devotees. Like we don't like have clear understanding. We need help. Like we, I, I, I mean, we like, I'm thinking of um, one of our morning songs and I think the name is Sri Guru Vandana. Yeah, like praising uh, the, our, our guru and our um, most immediate uh, connection to the disciplic or disciplic, disciplic succession, Srila Prabhupada. And the reason why I'm thinking of that is because like we were born into like darkness. That, that's what I'm remembering. But I, unfortunately, my nervousness is probably blocking me from remembering the exact translation of that area. But um, we, we need a guru. Like we need a bona fide spiritual master. We need the association of a pure devotee and like we are so fortunate to be getting that association through reading and connecting um over bhagavad gita this is this is this is wonderful so like right now uh we are we are doing some devotional service and that's wonderful um but yeah i was just like i was thinking like okay all right, because um, I want to refer to a different text here. Uh, so this is going to be chapter 18, and I think it's uh, text 67. And I'll, I'll read it out. That'll be okay to do. My apologies for the delay here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so it seems that I may not uh, be able to find it. Maybe it's 69. Huh? Drew, would you like me to read the verse? Well, um, you know, it's more so, I think it was from the purport. Okay. Uh, one of the, one of the purports, but all right, it was uncomfortable for me. And that seems to be a theme. It was uncomfortable for me because it was saying like one, uh, oh, Okay, yes, here it is. It is the, uh, it is text 65. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Yeah, so like, uh, I was reading um, this part of the purport. Life should be so molded that one will always have the chance to think of Krishna. And um, uh, later on, it says he should arrange his life in such a way that throughout the 24 hours, he cannot but think of Krishna. And that, like, that, that, um, Gosh, I, because it took me so long to find that part, that text, I'm losing track of where I wanted to go with that. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess what I can say now is that 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 is that can be held out and put in one's mind as the goal and i think that uh what what prabhupada would want um is for me for us to uh be sincere and what i what i think that means is like 
really just being honest with where we're at. And I think that that like in itself poses a, a, uh, a challenge and a healthy challenge. And it's, it's difficult because it's uncomfortable and it, it, it can be uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be, but it can be uncomfortable because well, the reason why we're here is because we're not pure devotees. And so we're going to be frequently coming into contact with um, um, mistakes and, and failure. But as, um, as I'm considering this, I think those are opportunities for humility. And, um, and again, sincerity. And to um, remain determined. And so my understanding of determined, as given actually in this chapter, we can say a little, some positive qualities. Why not go back to text one through three, where um, uh, Srila Prabhupada is talking about um, uh, determination. And it may take me too long to find it. So I'll share what I'm remembering. And hopefully that's accurate determination. So like, you know, even if we fail, if we make mistakes to, you know, uh, remain firm in our conviction and to persevere, to be patient with ourselves. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, with, with some humility, with maybe 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 some embarrassment but it's kind of just like yeah i'm just i'm noticing uh some judgment on myself just wanting to give something to you all and so that that's what i'm endeavoring to do but i'm i'm having the judgment of this class that it's like uh a little broken up and no need to comment on that or refer to that but i i think sometimes it just helps me to like just name it out loud uh, and so that I can move on and hopefully uh, serve in some way by continuing to go through this purport. Um, okay, so on the next page, uh, Prabhupada is talking about uh, one should always be careful to keep his body clean by bathing, brushing teeth, changing clothes, and like it's, um, I guess I don't have too much to say there, um, but I, I have, I have like heard Prabhupada when he's talking about um, cleanliness, he not only talks about like cleanliness in terms of taking a shower, but almost like a, mm, a regiment, a routine wake up, clean one's body, and like engage in um, devotional service through attending a morning program. Um, so it's like cleaning, cleansing our external, our body, so that we can then hopefully continue to cleanse and clean our, our, um, our heart, our spirit, soul, our, maybe our consciousness. And um, I, I'm not quite sure if this is possible, but to maybe even clean and yeah, I think it is to clean our mind and to maybe direct our mind so that it can become our friend and we can think of Krishna uh, and how we can serve Krishna, but maybe uh, more appropriate for us as um, conditioned souls is how we can sure, serve Srila Prabhupada. And I think that that might be an important distinction, uh, particularly for me, because, yeah, I, I, I desire that relationship with Krishna, and I want to know, like, what is that relationship, and how can I, you know, like, yeah, how, how, how can I um, have this direct relationship with Krishna, but I'm, I'm remembering what Dira Govinda has shared before, and how he has shared that, um, uh, connection to Srila Prabhupada and the disciplic succession is like wearing glasses. It allows us to see. It allows us to see better. And so 
having our connection be focused on Srila Prabhupada, it supports us in understanding the same way that glasses support us in seeing. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, something that I'm appreciating right now, um, and it no longer feels as uncomfortable, is the use of the word always. Um, it's like, I think that there can be a, uh, I think that there can be like, there is a phrase maybe like never say never, or maybe it could even be applied like never say always. Um, but I find that in this Bhagavad Gita of absolute truth always is used quite frequently. And um, it, it, I, I uh, it seems appropriate to me, like it makes sense because um, the, it, my, my understanding is that the goal of life is to, um, to understand God and to revive our relationship to, with God, to uh, love God. Um, but like, yeah, like, Maybe, maybe at this stage, it, um, it's not realistic to be thinking about always, but maybe it, it can be a, a long-term goal. But I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks it can be helpful to actually have that be the goal and to uh, measure myself with that, but to um, not um, maybe become harsh towards myself with with judgment because like wow like I don't know like I've heard the word trillion and I have no conception of trillion just as my daughter may not even have conception of 100 like yesterday or the other day I got uh, I went to the library and I found out there there the limit for library books is 100 and I was like oh well I live in Micanopy now I, I'm not going to go to the library like every day but I'd like for my daughter to be reading and like learning how to read. So I got a hundred books and I was like, do you want to see how much a hundred is Prima? And she really wasn't that interested. She was like, no dad, I like kind of don't really care, but I'm into, I'm open to reading them. I don't have any conception of trillion. And my understanding is that we've, we've gone through trillions of lives and have not attained pure devotional service. So it's like that, that, that does not need to be a reason to make excuses like, well, trillions of lives have gone by already. Uh, I mean, why be urgent? But at the same time, maybe it offers perspective that um, can allow me to put my whip down so that I don't do any flogging because that wouldn't be helpful. Um, okay, let's see if I have anything more to say here um okay so i don't know if anyone else uh like may have felt triggered or uncomfortable uh by the um text here that uh talks about women i i felt a little uncomfortable because i was thinking like okay like how would I ever share this with someone who maybe that like this probably would have been the first to share with them like first time person like okay let's get into this purport or I don't know or maybe it would I don't know basically like uh, I, I what I love what I so love about Prabhupada and I just hope to like connect with him more through his books but I really like hearing um, stories of Prabhupada and um, cause it kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like I get to feel like I'm having some more closer association. Um, but what I appreciate about him is time, place, and circumstance. So maybe it would be appropriate for some women. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. So it is clearly like in the Manu Samhita, which uh, it seems was appreciated as like mm, a a law 
um, a, a um, book of knowledge that contains maybe rules and regulations. That's what I'm getting from it. Um, it is clearly stated that a woman should not be given freedom. Like, whoa, whoa, that, like, what? Like, it, okay, but then, but then the next sentence is like, all right, so it's not that intense. Like, that does not mean that women are to be kept as slaves. Okay, so, all right, but still a pretty strong statement, but they are like children. Whoa, that's, that's like right back to uncomfortable, in my opinion. Like, oh, like, because like, that, that I, I, I don't know. I think that one could interpret that as demeaning. Like, oh, is that like suggesting inferior intelligence? Because like, yeah, Prema doesn't know what two plus two is like, but that that might be just lack of knowledge. Like that might not be mean lack of intelligence. So like maybe maybe what is what is being spoken about here isn't uh, intelligence um, and and like and uh, like that, that that there's like a lack of respect for women. And maybe what is being said here is that there isn't even a lack of respect for children um, in terms of intelligence. Okay. And, and like, I don't know, I think, um, uh, you know, no one would, uh, the, the, there might be a phrase like, well, stop treating me like a child. I've actually heard, had someone say that to me, uh, Kara, she said that to me and I was like, oh, dang. I don't know. I, uh, so that, that, that doesn't have a good connotation. She was, she wasn't happy when she was saying that. Um, so like, okay, but let's keep reading. Cause what is this about? Children are not given freedom, but that does not mean that they are kept as slaves. Okay. What does it mean? The demons have now neglected such injunctions and they think that women should be given as much freedom as men. However, this has not improved the social condition of the world. Actually, a woman should be given protection at every stage of life. She should be given protection by the father in her younger days, by the husband in her youth, and by the grown-up sons in her old age. Okay, so like, I am really just endeavoring to understand. And if I'm honest, I would say like, I probably don't, but like maybe, maybe, maybe if we're all endeavoring to understand um, and with the help of those who are maybe more wise and knowledgeable, we can, we can get this. Like, so I'm thinking maybe like what Prabhupada is meaning here is is talking about like positions. So when I think of like the Varn Ashram and my understanding of Varn Ashram is social institutions. So it is the divisions of society and that is meant to keep peace and maybe to um, plug people into their natural propensity. Um, and so like maybe what, uh, Prabhupada is saying here is that uh, women uh, may have a distinct role in uh, humans like, okay, let's refer back to the page before, civilized human society, Vedic society. And maybe a helpful distinction here is like, okay, Vedic, so sometimes when people talk about Ayurveda, right, that's some of the Vedas. So that could be considered Vedic, like one might equate that to um, geographic location, culture. Oh, that's Indian. Oh, that's caste system. Oh, that's like Indian culture, Vedic civilization. So like Indian civilization, like maybe to an extent that can be equated maybe at a particular time. I don't really know that, but I think that um, maybe what Prabhupada is talking about is um, like is is talking about um, how civilization ought to be organized in order to best serve each spirit soul 
based on their uh based on their like mm, based on their interestingly like based on their body and that's kind of interesting to me and has me a little puzzled I'm like oh but how could how could this be like how can we be basing something on the body but like we are needing to get out of this material bodily conception of life like what is that contradictory okay I'm wanting to be faithful of of Prabhupada because I want to I want to understand here rather than to become argumentative or to even try to jump over Prabhupada because like clearly Prabhupada has deeper understanding than me. So like, let me not jump to the place of like, maybe I'm having clearer understanding than Prabhupada. Like maybe Prabhupada was like wrong on this. So like, I don't know, like that might not be a helpful place to go. So I'm wanting to understand. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I think I'm understanding is that maybe Prabhupada is, is, um, is giving to us, uh, maybe not like specific instructions here in this particular purport about how civilization needs to be organized for it to best serve, um, self-realization for it to be a godly society for it to be a aryan uh, civilization which um is is basically vedic civilization which is basically one that is geared towards moving forward what it, what is like moving forward Prabhupada has just uh talked about aryan aryan as uh meaning moving forward well what is it to move forward spiritually? It is to make progress. It is to make advancement in spiritual consciousness in like spiritual life. And so that means to become more and more Krishna conscious, to pursue pure devotion. And so I think here that this is not meant to demean or to, um, Oh, I think a proper word might be like subjugate to like put women down to make women inferior. I think it is more so about delineating and figuring out like based on your body, what might be the appropriate role for you in a society um, aside from occupation, right? So like, yeah, an important role uh, for women, not all women, is to be uh, a mother. And that is like a, a hugely important role. Um, uh, I love something that I've heard uh, Dear Govinda say. He's like, 100% of us came from a mother. <laughs> and I, I loved like the maybe like the simplicity in that. And I, pre- I, I also experienced it as a little silly and fun. Um, so like, yeah, it's pretty important. And I, I have heard from, oh man, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that Prabhupada has said that like the mother, a woman. Okay. So like a woman, the mother is our first guru. It's just like, that's important. Like that's an important role. And so I'm thinking that uh, Prabhupada is not meaning to, um, mm, to again, like put down, to subjugate, to suggest inferiority, um, but is more so, uh, giving, giving, uh, a sense of like roles, positions, and what would best serve, uh, having a godly, civilization okay i have said a lot and um i hope that it might have one part of it oh my gosh i love i want to share one last thing what i love about Srila Prabhupada is his 
amazing humility. Like I will never forget re like reading in the introduction where even if one soul, I believe is said, like, even if one soul is brought back to Godhead, I will consider this a success. Wow. Yeah. So like, I'm, can, I'm thinking of Prabhupada and I'm like, okay, even if like one thing that I said might've been beneficial for one person, I will consider that a success. And um, I want to thank you all for your attendance your participation, um, your presence. And um, yeah, just like from a place of like, hopefully humility, your, your patience, your patience with me and your tolerance. Um, yeah, okay. So I, I open the floor um, to hear any comments, uh, uh, any like, personal realizations, any sharing, uh, maybe even questions. Uh, not to say that I have an answer, but I will do my best to um, respond in a way that hopefully is supportive and helpful, if not just to you, the person asking a question, uh, but to us as a whole, um, because um, our discussion can Let's, let's remember our discussion can be so supportive for like further, maybe like, mm, like buttressing our little sprout that is our like uh, spiritual like lives. Like maybe it is watering that seed. Maybe it is adding compost to that soil. Like maybe it is like, yeah, yeah. All right. That's all I'll say. I just want to open the floor to you all. Hi, Krishna. Oh, maybe there Hare are questions Krishna. in the chat. Oh, hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Drew, we're from Prabhupada House enjoying class. You are like a podcast <laughs> presenter, man. I'm like loving that you're just having this conversation with us and yourself and like just being uncomfortable and being getting more comfortable with the uncomfortableness and just like <laughs> you know, going with it <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> so i'm really enjoying enjoying um your class this evening and appreciating you and um i wanted to share uh that i also felt very uncomfortable the first time i read this verse and i was feeling like I'm this woman, I'm this businesswoman. I've had, you know, this, that, the other thing. I can do it all. <laughs> and you know what? That's exhausting. So I'm actually finding that I'm loving this association because, like yourself, and like others I see, like Devin and Patrick and Eze. I mean, I'm I'm like, hey, you guys are my my sons, <laughs> and I'm relying on you to help me through um my my uh yeah my my protection like i feel like really protected by having have all of you as as my sons like i really love now being called mother anasuya because it feels so beautiful and so re reassuring and um so i just want to appreciate that and also i want to appreciate my father because i feel like he is such a wonderful example to his bride my mother They've been married, um, it'll be 66 years. Um, and he's will he'll be turning 88 this Saturday. And my father is so gentle and loving and protective of my mother. And like if there's anything that I do that upsets her, oh my, <laughs> I'm gonna hear about it and you better make it right with your mom. <laughs> mm. And so I see my father in this so much. And um and yeah, so I just wanted to say how, you know, maybe like five years ago when I first read this because I took the Bhagavad Gita course that you're in now with us. And so this is my third time taking the, the class. And so I've read this, you know, several times. And yeah, so each each time I read it, I, I get a different understanding. So that's what I like too, is this it's timeless. So whenever I read a verse, it, it's whatever is happening for me in my life at that time, it really <coughs> speaks to me. So um yeah, I'm just appreciating you and appreciating uh, my 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 sons out there. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mother Anasuya. 
I have never um, called you that. And I'm having a deeper appreciation uh, for that, uh, that like, yeah, that, not just that, I guess it's a title. Yeah, yeah, that, um, hmm. yeah, so I'm appreciating that. And um, something else that I got from your sharing is that um, you're feeling some appreciation, maybe some, uh, some, some gratitude uh, for um, your, your father's example in how he uh, was protective of uh, your mom and still is. Um, and I would imagine that that protection extends to you as well. Um, there's like a natural extension there. And so that's, that's really beautiful to hear that and inspiring for me. Mm. And one other thing that I want to mention, thank you for um, your appreciation. And, and I want to say that because for me personally, it can be challenging to, um, well, I've, I've just, uh, I have maybe an unconscious, sometimes unconscious habit of deflecting appreciation. And um, you're, you're sharing about maybe my approach to um, this class today, facilitating, leading, um, being like a podcast, like that's particularly encouraging for me because honestly, like, yeah, I, I think, um, I, I'm, I'm like endeavoring to figure out like what, how can I serve? How can I serve, um, Srila Prabhupada? How can I serve, uh, Krishna? And perhaps I can just keep reading and keep endeavoring to understand. And maybe even I'll have a, a class, I mean, a podcast where, uh, I just hang out, um, uh, and, and read and I don't know, we just go through it. That, that might be fun. And maybe I like, invite other devotees and we just like go in on some verses <laughs> i think that'd be so fun i find that actually actually that's exciting okay anyways um yeah let's see if anyone else has something to say all right krishna i could share um lighting here um uh, i was i am i'm i'm so super inspired uh drew by you know i came in at uh i don't know maybe 20 minutes ago or something like that 16 minutes ago and so i unfortunately missed most most of the class but the 16 minutes of what i did here um i'm so inspired like you were sharing how you admire Prabhupada's humility. And like the whole time I'm thinking, man, I so admire Drew's humility. Like I experienced he was so humble in this service. And yeah, resonating with the podcast uh, person, the podcaster, like, I mean, I was just like really blown away uh, with your presentation. Like I, I loved the, like I was like really impacted by your sharing. I found it so powerful. And I loved when you would say, and I, I don't really know, but this is kind of my experience. Like, I just love the, you know, the, the honesty, the, the, the realness. And, and I was uh, uh, deeply touched by your sharing. So thank you so much. And Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I really, uh, I really appreciate you saying that. Um, because yeah like this the, you you saying that it it's uh it's supporting like a little like a little spark like a little a little something of hope you know that like there might be like something for me to do that like kind of feels like you know just enlivening in my in my like heart my soul like I just you know that's what I really want and I I feel like that's a that's a, a really like a source of a lot of like distress and depression. And it's just like, 
what the f am i doing you know it's just like i i like i've really i don't know if i could even say i've made an earnest effort but like i've wanted for like massage to like somehow like be dovetailed to christian service i would like chant in my head or try to think of krishna or i wanted to paint my room blue like i was just trying like but like it's like i don't know it just didn't really ever feel like it was gonna work you know so really encouraging really helpful to hear that um because i i feel like really uncomfortable in this service and i've like i like someone was like yo you're giving class like right you know and i was like like both fortunately and unfortunately, like I'm kind of feeling like uncomfortable in that, but yeah, like, I don't know. I think there's a reason why I didn't, I didn't really feel comfortable backing out either. Like I just, I really want to do this. So thank you for your comment um, as a, yeah, thank you so much. It's helpful. Seem really touched uh, as you're talking about your desire to to serve Krishna, um, yeah. and it's it's so sweet to witness how how moved you are. Thank you, Drew. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, I don't I don't know if I have the like facility to unmute people. But anytime you guys just unmute yourself somehow or someone who wants to facilitate that, yeah, let's do it. Hi, Krishna, dear back to Drew. Um, I told everybody's comments about the podcast. I look forward to listening to it. Um, I found your uh, class fascinating and um, a very nice, Living of personal realization, deep philosophical impulse, and then also like candid question at the same time. Like it was really fascinating because it seems that nothing was happening. Like you were not quoting verses, or you know, and and at the same time, so much was happening because you were saying so much. And like the, the weaving of all those elements was quite fascinating for me. And I, I appreciated your different point about our position in the material world and about the, the demonic nature. And you really made a point, it's nature. And it's not something that's fixed and it, because it's material nature. And material nature is temporary. And material nature comes and go and doesn't have lasting effect. So it's nature, yes. And then the, the way you were really emphasizing that nature, and then um, and then uh, uh, your your love for Shri Prabhupada is is the con uh, um, I'll say like contagious. Yes, yeah, it's it's obvious and contagious. And uh, I appreciate your uh, your um, vulnerability in uh, presenting things that are uncomfortable and diving into them. When I, when, <laughs> when you, when you say, okay, 16, 7, I say, oh no, <laughs> where are we going to go with that? And then uh, I found you very courageous to uh, go and dive into those difficult, challenging, taboo topics and just be comfortable with it in being uncomfortable with them yeah. and uh Cara made, made a comment and i don't know if everyone wrote it read it but i think it's a really nice comment so i will read it it does seem like Prabhupada is letting us know that women are vulnerable in society and need protection for those who are not and uh, listening to your class also what i was thinking is that we protect only what's valuable. Like if I have broken glasses, well, I can put them all around. But if I have a diamond, what do I do with the diamond? I protect the diamond. And it doesn't make the diamond not valuable. It's quite the opposite. Because, of, because something is valuable, because women are so valuable in society, in fact, they are the fiber of society, they will get protected because of their value. Not, not the opposite because they're valueless or like that. So, um, 
I appreciate it, you know, all your points. And it is said that I, I really also like you, at the end of the comment from Devon, following one mistake with another. <laughs> there you said that, and it was really funny. And how you, uh, you presented, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's in Kali yoga, like in, in different yoga, uh, you know, the, the quality of, of, of uh, demoniac and, and divine are, you know, sometimes in different bodies, sometimes in different planets or different countries, well, in different places in the planet. But in Kali yoga, they are in the same body. So, so I appreciate if you pointed out, like, yes, we want to read that part of the Bhagavad Gita and identify, yeah, this part of me, yeah, has a tendency to, uh, to want to be free from all unregulation, to want to be uh, kind of rebellious, stay, you know, stay strong in my rebellion against Krishna, against Krishna's creation, against um, the injunction, and not to be clean, or and all that, and to... Uh, to take those parts like you like you did, and to look at it not to be discouraged, and to uh, to to take it in a way that okay, well, it leads me to humility, and that humility is the most conducive quality for spiritual life anyway. And it's not about changing the vehicle; it's about seeing the vehicle I have and then follow the rule and regulation for that vehicle in order to go to my destination. But the quality of the vehicle, like you made the point about, um, it's just on the body we pass from. And, well, yes, let's understand the body. Let's have, understand our vehicle. And, you know, like maybe there is a fast lane on the, on the highway and there is a slow lane. Well, if I have that vehicle, that's where I belong. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to arrive at my destination. Yeah. And my mm. destination is very protected. So I... I really uh, appreciate your class, and I, I, I look forward to the podcast. <laughs> all right, Krishna. Thank you, Mother Malini, for all of your comments. I look forward to um, re-watching this uh, part of the um, class because I think that in the short time that you spoke, you shared uh, so much uh, of value. Um, and uh, yes, thank you for your encouragement. Yeah, thank you for your encouragement and support. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Bhakti Drew. Garuda and I thoroughly enjoyed the uh, class listening to you as well. And I just experienced you as a very endearing and um, drawing us all in and welcome, like, very welcoming, like welcoming everybody to exactly, even though you, maybe you felt uncomfortable, you seem to be um at ease just welcoming everybody into your consciousness and showing us around what it's like and so it felt very like warm and safe and uh it's just really fun it's just really just because you're so uh, like um sincere the sincerity caused us you know to to i don't know if you noticed i don't think you're really watching everybody but we were all smiling really big i we didn't have our video on but there was like laughter not because you're being funny, but just, I think, so sweet. And that's something I've experienced with you a lot that it's just very touching mm -hmm. and um, transformative. It, it gives me like a, a feeling of like, oh, oh I want to have a pure heart like Drew and yeah, you know, like Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. And like, I just feel this, this sweetness. And um, so thank you for being you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Bhakti Drew, thank you for your class. Hare Krishna. Hearing. Yeah, appreciate hearing from you. Um, what, what comes to mind, Mother Damayanti, is um, something that I've heard uh, Prabhupada say uh, many times, and it, it like 
it brings a smile to my heart honestly it just feels very like heartwarming is like when he's like just try to understand <laughs> just read my books and just try to understand and so like I don't know I just I find I find um that like phrase that he says to be so like encouraging um and and comforting because it's like it's it, it's far different from like you know like yeah one of like condemnation like like you all are demoniac why don't you understand like why haven't you gotten it yet and like why are you living the way that you are you ungodly person like it's like i i just i what i love about Prabhupada is that he's uh just so like multifaceted and um he is uh so in so like my experience my experience of him which is interesting for me to say because sometimes i i think i can only speak of like people who are in their body and talk about my experience of them but like my experience of Prabhupada is that um yeah he, he he is so intentional and conscious of how he is at every moment and with every every single person that maybe is in a room that is in his presence it's like how he is going to be is like determined by his service it's not like it's not like maybe maybe this is an appropriate use of the word whimsical but i've come to have an appreciation for that word whimsical um it was for sure used um in this chapter so yeah according to his whims so um yeah it's not just like maybe according to how he's feeling like maybe he allows for feelings of like deep love and devotion to arise when it's appropriate and i i imagine this is i'm guilty some mental speculation i imagine that uh prabhupad um uh would would choose to like mm, conceal um his experiences of like ecstatic love if that was appropriate actually uh, I think that I heard a story about Prabhupada where uh, a devotee said that Prabhupada noticed or like sensed that there was a person in the room. Maybe they were like, as Prabhupada would say, like a big, big man. Um, and those who aren't so familiar, maybe with Prabhupada isms, things that he says a lot, uh, a big, big man would be like a someone who has great material importance maybe a government official or a business person a rich person so was in the room and like there was a huge elaborate like luxurious amazing vyasasan and someone who might not be familiar with that word vyasasan so like place for um this is my understanding place for a person to give class from and so instead of sitting on the Vyasasan, Prabhupada sat on the floor. And so like, that's to me an example of time, place and circumstance and Prabhupada making like choices based on um, how to best serve who's in the room. Like he didn't want to trigger that person's jealousy any more than it already was. He wanted to be able to preach to that person. And so like, yeah, that, that's just, uh, I, I love. I love Prabhupada and uh, that, that, that just came up because, yeah, I don't even remember why it came up, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it was something that you said, Mother Tommy uh, for me Prabhupada. to be like, Yeah, for me to be like uh, appreciating when Prabhupada says, just try it, just try to understand. Yeah, because, oh, because because that's how I feel like and that, maybe that's why a good fit for me might be a podcast because uh others and myself we could just show up like let's just try to understand like let's just try uh give it a go Hare krishna would anyone else like to comment we've got at least six more minutes <laughs> maybe a question you can name your podcast just try to understand 
Yes, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. Hi, Krishna. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed your class, Drew. Thank you. I felt engaged. I felt, um, um, like Malini said, the, the, the verse, like, oh boy, like, where are you going to go with the de demoniac stuff? And I only recently read that chapter and um, yeah, there's a lot in there. And I was appreciating your honesty and made me laugh. And, <laughs> and um, I so also support your idea to have a podcast and, um, and I felt your love for ProPod and, and I liked how you were saying like, yeah, trying to understand, endeavoring to understand and you just went for it and you went line by line or all the different directions you did go. And it was, yeah, it was good. Thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Yeah, thank you for your comments, Laura. Um, it's, it's nice to hear and know that um, you all got that like, more than one person got value and and really like if one person did get value like that would be that would be wonderful and you know like yeah something that i'm thinking of is how like okay i first came into contact with krishna consciousness uh through krishna prashadam and it's like yeah at that time i wasn't thinking like wow this is super benefiting my spiritual life and i'm like just adding little tokens to my spiritual bank account it was just like this food is good and i had no idea how that was benefiting me and so it's it's like nice to hear that um even one person is sensing that they got benefit and so i appreciate you all uh, sharing that you did get benefit and i just think of how like it's it's so wonderful in 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 our experience like it's a it's a out of eight million four hundred thousand species we're getting to have this uh human experience um where we have the consciousness that um can be dovetailed to krishna it's like wow that's that's a wonderful thing that um years down the line something can have like is has benefited us and we didn't even realize it so i just think about that because it's like um this this was yeah like you know what something that was talked about in this chapter chapter 16 text one through three is like the positive qualities and one of them is sacrifice like we just we made a sacrifice together like we sacrificed some time uh for krishna and it's like, I don't know, it almost feels a little weird calling it a sacrifice, at least for me, because it's like, yeah, uh, sacrifice, I tend to think I'm, I'm giving up something that I want, you know, and I'm like, I, it's like, that doesn't sound attractive, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, that's not good. And, and, but yeah, this may, like, it seems that this could be considered a sacrifice. Um, and so, that's so wonderful that we got to do that um, together. Um, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you, um, your presence and uh, your sharing, whether through comment or um, just speaking moments ago. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful because I think that together, together as a group, uh, we help to benefit one another. And I think that's what's special. I think that's what's special. And I'm glad that I got to be a part of that and served uh, a role in that. Hare right, Krishna. Would anyone else uh, like to share anything before we call it a night and end our sacrifice? <laughs> I just wanted to note that I really like that you brought up Prabhupada's um, simple intention of even if just one person is transformed or goes back to God or becomes, you know, purified by his writings, he would consider it as a success. Like if that can be his goal, 
it's just so humble. It's like, it really takes the pressure off of me and my like, oh, I hope I have an impact. You know, it's like Prabhupada can experience satisfaction. Like, I don't, you know, I think it was true for him. That's, that would be satisfaction for him to just make a serious endeavor and to at least affect one person. Then um, it just takes the pressure off of me because sometimes, you know, there's, you know, there's people out there and they have like, oh, they have 10,000 followers or 70,000 followers and they're making an impact or like, thousands of thousands of people they've lives they've touched and um there's so many people throw that around and um that's great for them but <laughs> i'd like to have a humble goal that takes the pressure off and just and just be sincere whatever my efforts are and hope that i've impacted one person you know <laughs> so that's a nice goal actually yeah. yes yes and 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 we're benefited because we're getting to learn from Prabhupada's example and and like that's that's his that's his like his honor his um his his role his like position he's our acharya and and um yeah it's uh, he was displaying humility there for us and like my my experience of Prabhupada is that like that that's real is like yeah that that humility is even like a part of his service like it's more than just like a feeling it's like a part of his service and that's that, that that's again just my my opinion and what i appreciate based on my opinion is that my, my sense is that like he was just 100 percent all the time in service and that's so inspiring. That's so amazing. That's like so wonderful. He just loved Krishna that much that he just like he couldn't get enough. And like I've 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 like I've uh, heard Prabhupada talk about like I don't know. I think he was maybe he was talking about um, devotees or maybe being like pure devotion. And he was like if if you're not, I don't know, I won't even go there because I don't know that I remember so clearly. So I'd hate to, <laughs> I'd hate to like confuse and mislead. But Jai Srila Prabhupada. Um, well, I want to honor our time. Um, I know flexibility is a thing, but I, I mean, I could stay here for whenever, as long as we wanted to, but I want to honor our time. I, I really, um, care about you all I'm, I'm feeling love for you all because uh i am am i'm getting to receive a feeling of support and and that that stirs love in me um just appreciation you know and yeah thank you all i i hope you all have a wonderful night and um i hope to be with you all in some way soon um Hi Krishna, hi Bol. Hey Krishna, dear Bhaktivedanta, thank you so much. Thank you, and I know many people listen to your class. Hi Krishna. Hi Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Bhagavad Gita ki. Jai. Hi.